welcome back to my channel. If you're a new visitor here, you're also highly welcome. In this lecture, we'll be looking at the blood supply of the nasal cavity. I have done a lecture on the anatomy of the nasal cavity. Please go and check that lecture up to keep yourself updated. We'll be limiting this lecture to just the blood supply of the nasal cavity. So right on with me as I unfold the different branches that give blood supply to the nasal cavity. <laughs> The nasal cavity is seen to have an extensive blood supply and it receives branches from both the external and the internal carotid arteries. These two arteries are seen to give blood supply to the nasal cavity. So we have a total of six branches emerging from these two arteries. We have four branches from the external carotid artery and we have two branches emerging from the internal carotid artery. This giving a total of six branches. You can see how rich the blood supply of the nasal cavity would be. Let's say this is the configuration of the nasal cavity here. This is where we have the nose and behind we have the body of the sphenoid bone. And we see that this is a common carotid artery here. You know that the common carotid artery will subdivide into the external carotid artery, which is highlighted here in green, and also the internal carotid artery, which is highlighted here in red. And these branches is what gives sub branches to supply the nasal cavity. For the external carotid artery that is highlighted here in green, it gives off two branches, which for that gives off two sub branches to supply the nasal cavity. And this making a total of four branches. Then we have the internal carotid artery here that is arrowed in black, which gives off just two branches to supply the nasal cavity. So right on with me as I unfold as these branches emerge to supply the different regions of the nasal cavity. So talking about the external carotid artery, we already said that the external carotid artery gives off two branches, which then further gives off two sub branches to supply the nasal cavity. And this is making a total of four branches. So the initial two branches that would emerge from the external carotid artery, we include the facial artery and also the maxillary artery. So we have two branches that would emerge from the facial artery. And we also have two branches that will emerge from the maxillary artery. And this will be making a total of four branches. Remember in our previous slide, we already stated that the external carotid artery will give off four branches, while the internal carotid artery will give off two branches. So this will now make a total of four branches because each of these arteries, which are the facial and the maxillary artery, will give off two sub branches each, which will then make up a total of four branches. So let's say this is the configuration of the nasal cavity. This is the external carotid artery here that is highlighted in gray. This external carotid artery will give off the facial branch, which is the facial artery that is harrowed here. And this facial artery will then further gives off sub branches, which are two in number. So we have a branch here that is harrowed in yellow. We also have another branch here that is harrowed in yellow. And those are the two branches that are given off by the facial artery. Then the maxillary artery, this is the maxillary artery here, harrowed. The maxillary artery will further give off two sub branches. And these are the two sub branches here highlighted in purple. This is one of the branches. And the second branch is also here highlighted in purple. So let's write on to see the specific names of these arteries and also the specific regions of the nasal cavity that they supply. Let's first look at the facial artery, which is the initial branch of the external carotid. So let's say this is the anterior part. This is where we have the nose and this is the posterior region. And this is the lateral wall. And this is where we have the conchia. So let's check and build this background or this alignment. We know that we have the common carotid artery. We already said that the common carotid artery will give up the external and the internal carotid artery. So this is the external carotid artery. And this artery here that is highlighted in red is the internal carotid artery which we part into the cranium to supply the different structures that are located within the cranial cavity. But for the external carotid is where we have the emergence of the facial artery. So this is the facial artery here that is also arrowed in black. We said that the facial artery will then give off sub branches. These sub branches are two in number that will be supplying the nasal cavity. And the first one is the lateral nasal artery. This is the lateral nasal artery here. You can see it as it emerges from the facial artery. You see it parting above towards the lateral side 
of the nose. And this is where it supplies the skin around that region. Then the second branch is the superior labial artery. The superior labial artery is what is seen here to be arrowed in yellow. This is the superior labial artery, also emerging from the facial artery. And you see it ascending up towards the nasal cavity. And at this point, you see it's supplying the vestibule of the nasal cavity. We already established where the vestibule of the nasal cavity is located in our previous part one lecture on the nasal cavity. So it supplies that region and it also further gives off septal branches. So these are the septal branches here at its terminal end where these branches supply the nasal septum. Those are the two branches that emerge from the facial artery and are seen to supply specific regions of the nasal cavity. You can see that the facial artery is an initial subdivision of the external carotid artery. And this we then give off sub branches, which we supply the nasal cavity as we've stated. So going to the second branch is the maxillary artery. So this is the lateral wall of the nasal cavity, and that is where we have the projection that are called the conchi and also the meatus around this region. So let's see this background as the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. This is the common carotid artery, as we established. We know that this we divide into the external and the internal carotid. This is the external carotid artery. And this, highlighted in red here, is the internal carotid artery. From the external carotid artery, we already have the emergence of the facial artery. This is the facial artery here that we described in our previous slide. Then the second artery that will be emerging from the external carotid artery that will be supplying the nasal cavity is the maxillary artery. And this is the maxillary artery here, also harrowed in black. We said the maxillary artery also will further give off two sub branches that will be supplying the nasal cavity. And one of the branches is the greater palatine artery. This is the greater palatine artery here, harrowed in purple. If you see this maxillary artery, at this anterior part, it gives off the greater palatine artery that pass through the incisive foramen. This is the incisive foramen here that is located in the anterior part of the heart palate. We also described this foramen in our previous part one lecture on the nasal cavity. So it passed through this foramen to be able to assess the nasal cavity. The specific regions of the nasal cavity that it supplies include the heart palate, the inferior meatus, and also it gives off septal branches to supply the nasal septum. The second branch that is also from the maxillary artery is the sphenopalatine artery. This is the sphenopalatine artery here, harrowed in yellow. You can see the maxillary artery at this region. The sphenopalatine artery emerges around this region, and you see it passing behind to assess the sphenopalatine foramen. We also described the sphenopalatine foramen in our previous part one lecture on the nasal cavity. So it passed through the sphenopalatine foramen to be able to assess the nasal cavity. And from there, you see it entering into the nasal cavity. And where it supplies is the larger region of the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. And also, it also gives off septal branches to supply the nasal septum. Because this region here has projected is the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. So these are the two branches that are seen to emerge from the maxillary artery that also gives supply to the nasal cavity. Then going to the internal carotid artery, we already established in our previous slide that the internal carotid artery only gives off two branches to supply the nasal cavity. And this is from the ophthalmic artery. So this is the common carotid artery, which divides into the external carotid and internal carotid. This is the internal carotid artery. This is the external carotid artery highlighted in green that gives off the facial artery and also the maxillary artery. So the internal carotid artery will enter into the cranium and you see it at this point, it gives off a number of branches. And one of the branches is the ophthalmic artery. This is the ophthalmic artery, you also are in black, within the cranial cavity. So this is where we have the cranial cavity up here. And within that region, it gives off two branches, which are the anterior ethmoidal artery, and this is the anterior ethmoidal artery, and also the posterior ethmoidal artery. And this is the posterior ethmoidal artery. So these two arteries, we pass through the cribriform plate of ethmoidal bone. We already discussed the cribriform plate of ethmoid also in our previous lecture that we said it forms the roof of the nasal cavity. So you see these two arteries 
packing through the cribriform plate so as to be able to assess the nasal cavity. And you see them supplying specific regions of the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. We already said that this is the lateral wall of the nasal cavity because we had the conchine. So you see the anterior etmoidal heart Supplying the anterior palateral wall of the nasal cavity, it also gives off septal branches. Then we have the posterior etmoidal artery supplying the posterior hopper region of the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. You see that the etmoidal artery is from the ophthalmic artery supplies the upper region of the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. You can see that the different branches are taking up specific regions of the nasal cavity. And those are the two branches that are seen to emerge from the internal carotid through the ophthalmic artery. Then these arteries, remember as we go through with the different slide, we have some of them giving off septal branches. They do not just give off these branches. These branches are seen to form anastomosis. And this is what is referred to as the kissel batch anastomosis. So this anastomosis is seen at the anterior part of the nasal septum, but towards the inferior region. So it is seen at the anterior inferior part of the nasal septum. So it is basically a vascular network that is formed around this region. And the specific name of this region is the Kissenbach's area. This area can also be referred to as the Litus area. So the area where we have the Kissenbach's plexus is referred to as the Litus area or the Kissenbach's area. So it's good for us to take note of this. And this region is specifically formed in the anterior inferior part of the nasal septum. So this is where we have the plexus formed. And this plexus is formed from branches of the different arteries that are seen to supply the nasal cavity. So we have a number of branches, which include the anterior etmoidal artery. This is the anterior etmoidal artery. Remember, we talked about this artery as an emergence or sub-emergence of the ophthalmic artery. So it enters through the cribriform plate of etmoid, And around this point, after supplying the anterior upper region of the lateral wall of the nasal cavity, you see it giving off septal branches. This is the region of the nasal septum. So this image represents the region of the nasal septum. And this is where we have this plexus form around this region. So contributing to the formation of this network, we have branches or septal branches from the anterior etmoidal artery. And this is what is harrowed here in blue. It is good to add that in some tests, the posterior etmoidal artery, which is also a branch of the ophthalmic artery, will be added as part of the contributory branches which that will be forming the Kessel branch plexus. Why in some tests, the posterior etmoidal artery will not be listed? So it depends on the test we're actually reading, but it's good for us to take note of this, that the posterior etmoidal artery may also be listed as part of the contributory branches that will be forming the Kessel branch plexus. Then we also have septal branches from the sphenopalatine artery. This is sphenopalatine artery. We also discussed about this sphenopalatine artery as a branch of the maxillary artery, which tends to run posteriorly and pass through the sphenopalatine foramen to assess the nasal cavity. This also gives off septal branches around the nasal septum, which also contributes to the formation of this plexus. Then the next artery is the septal branches from the greater palatine artery. And this is what is harrowed here in purple. Remember the greater palatine artery also emerges from the maxillary artery, and we say it passed through the incisive foramen. It finally gives off septal branches that also contributes to the formation of this plexus around the region where we have the nasal septum. Then the last artery that also contributes to the formation of this plexus is the superior labia artery. And this is the superior labia artery, which emerges from the facial artery and finally gives off septal branches that also contributes to the formation of kissel batch plexus. So you see this plexus form around the anterior medial part of the nasal septum. And that is why this region is usually prone to nasal bleeding because around this region, we have a collection of arteries coming together to form anastomosis. So this region, about 90% of nasal bleeding will occur from this region because of the creation of the anastomosis around that point. So talking about the venous drainage, the venous drainage follows the corresponding named artery. And that is why you see this region here highlighted in blue. So the arteries are highlighted in red and you see the corresponding named vein also highlighted in blue and they also follow the path of the arteries. For the upper region, the drainage is collected 
through the ophthalmic vein. So you see the direction, you have the anterior right moidal vein and the posterior right moidal vein. As we have the anterior and the posterior right moidal artery, we already said that there's going to be a corresponding named vein. And this will be collected into the ophthalmic vein. And from the ophthalmic vein, it will be directed into the cavernous sinus. This specific pattern of drainage is a potential pathway for infection to be drained into the cranial cavity. We know that the cavernous sinus is within the cranial cavity, and if venous drainage is occurring within the nasal cavity and is being directed into the cranial cavity, it is a potential site of the spread of infection along that course. So it's good for us to be able to highlight this. Then the remaining part, we know we have the maxillary vein. The maxillary vein also collects venous blood from a corresponding named vein from the arteries that emerges from the maxillary artery. So we have the maxillary vein here, and this we collect venous blood into the pterygoid plexus. The pterygoid plexus will further drain into the retromandibular vein, and that is how it goes down like that. For the facial artery, we know we have a corresponding named vein, which is the facial vein, that will also be collecting venous blood from the corresponding named vein from the branches of the facial artery. Remember, we also have branches of the facial artery. We have the lateral nasal artery and we have the superior labia artery. So these two arteries, we also have a corresponding named vein that will be drained into the facial vein. So from the facial vein, it, the venous blood will be drained and collected into the internal jugular vein. So that is how we have the venous drainage of the nasal cavity. But it's good for us to be able to highlight the fact that the venous drainage of the nasal cavity can also be directed into the cranial cavity along the part of the ophthalmic vein that will then be directed into the cavernous sinus. So talking about clinical anatomy, we talk about epistalsis, which is also referred to as nose bleeding. This is common, and this is attributed to the rich or extensive blood supply of the nasal cavity. There are two types of epistalsis. We can have the anterior and the posterior. The posterior is less common, while the anterior is more common. An anterior epistalsis does occur when you have blood draining from the anterior part of the nasal cavity. And when you have blood draining from the posterior part of the nasal cavity, it is called the posterior epistalsis. And we already stated that the posterior is less common. Causes of this could include changes in humidity or temperature, which will lead to nose dryness. Also trauma or injury. When you have accident and there is an impact around the nasal region, this could also lead to nose bleeding or epistalsis. Also infection and allergy. And first, management treatment option would be the application of direct pressure on the septal area so as to help prevent the flow of blood. So thanks for watching this video. Let's meet again.